Hey everybody, uh, we're going to begin circles. Uh, it's going to be a couple of quizzes that I'm going to pump out um, one right after the other. Circles is a very, it's a very long chapter. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of things to do and that you can do and formulas that have to do with circles. Um, but none of it's really that hard. So it's, uh, it's kind of like the difference between tedious and difficult. None of it is really particularly challenging. It's like, oh, do you know area of a circle? Do you know the formula? Then you just plug in the number and you're done. Um, so it's not hard, but there's so much information that has to go with circles that I'm going to parse it up and kind of give it to you in multiple quizzes um, and multiple videos. So today we're just going to go over like the basics of circles um, and then you know, move on to some of the more complicated stuff a little bit later. So we got our circle here. Uh, I don't think I have to explain to anyone what a circle is. This is a circle, right? We got a circle. The dot in the middle should be the center. Um, I, I, I think it's the center. It looks like the center. Good enough. Dot in the middle is the center. Most circles can be named by the coordinates of the center or the point. So if this had a point name, like if this was point uh, D, right, then this would just be circle D. So you can name it by that, right? Uh, but that'll, that'll come a little bit later. Let's talk about what's important today. So if I draw a line from the center to the outwards edge, right, line from the center to the outward edge, what is that called? Uh, some of you should know the answer because you know this. You've seen circles before, I do believe. This is an this is a radius. A radius is any line that goes from the center to the outward edge. They're all the same. So if I drew a radius from the center to the outward edge anywhere along this circle, it's going to be the exact same measurement all the way around. So if this radius. Eh, if this radius right here was, you know, five, every radius of this circle would be five. Every single one of them. So what do you call a line that goes from one end of the circle to another through the center? Some of you know this as well. That is called a diameter. All right, so a diameter is a line that goes from the edge to the center and keeps going straight to the other edge. Now, if a radius goes from the center outwards and the center would be the midpoint of the diameter, then a diameter is just, a, I mean, essentially, it's just two radius or radii lined up. So if this radius was five, uh, I don't know, feet, then this radius from the center out would be five. And this radius from the center out would be five. And you can see that if we add up the two pieces in order to create a diameter, we're gonna get double the radius. That's always true. A diameter is two radius or a radius is half the diameter. Um, you will very, very, very rarely in geometry have to deal with diameters because uh, we don't use them. There is one formula that normally uses diameter, but instead of using diameter, we just break it up and use radius instead because every single circle and sphere, the 3D equivalent, um, uses radius. There's no point in using diameter. But I mean, you, just, you still gotta know it exists. You still gotta know that it is double the radius. You gotta know the radius is half the diameter, that kind of stuff. All right, so we can get rid of that. We got our radius. Let's talk about this situation. No, I don't want it to be black. Let's make it red. Cool. So what do you call the, oh, it's so tiny. Let's try this. What do you call the outside part of a circle, right? This part that's chopped up by two radii. No, well, you're gonna call that an arc.
So an arc is a section of the circle, an outside section of the circle, right? That's an arc. And then, continuing on, I'll draw my little thing here. You should know what this symbolizes, right? Uh, if I do a little thing like that, you know that in here, this is an angle, right? We've created an angle. Specifically, this is called the central angle because it's near the center. Uh, that's, that's the explanation. That's literally it. So when two radii are coming out, or any number of radii, but when two radii are coming out of the center, they create an angle. That angle is going to be a central angle. Now we're going to keep it really simple. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of different angles uh, that we can use in circles, but we're not going to talk about uh, any of them today except for central angle. So we got central angle and arc, right? That's it. Easy peasy. So two radii chop off, they cut up an arc, right? And then we got our central angle. So central angle is easy. You would name it just like you would any other uh, point or any other angle, right? If this was point G, oh, I made this a little too high. Let me just put it there. Let's say G uh, B uh, R, sure. R B G P B R. Cool. So, and then I'll even give you the points real quick. I haven't. Uh, I'm using MS Paint if you haven't noticed, and it is not the easiest thing I've ever done but it also lets me actively like change the picture. So I figured that this would be the best option for what we're doing. Cool. And then I'm gonna do one other one over here. And we'll name that uh, J, sure. Cool. So we have these points around. Now, if you wanted to name the central angle, right? You could take your finger, trace it along the line and the three dots you run into, the middle one being the vertex, is going to be your angle, right? So this could be angle RGB. So how do we name an arc? Well, there's a couple ways. So you go from one cut all the way to the other, right? So you could call this arc GR or RG, it doesn't matter, they can, there, you can move them around. So you can call this arc GR. You could also call it minor arc GR. The reason why we call it minor arc GR is because there's also a major arc GR. So if I take the, let's do green, sure. Uh, let's do green pencil. The major arc would be all of this. So the green would be major arc GR. The blue is minor arc GR. The minor is smaller. That's literally the difference is minor and major. So you could also call it that. And then lastly, this picture is getting really ugly, so I'm going to erase this. Uh, oh, 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 it breaks too much. Okay. Lastly, when you're going around the circle, if you hit another point on your way to where you want to end, you can use that to signify the direction you went. So if I wanted to name this arc from G, the major arc GR, this one all the way around, I could say major arc GR or... I could say arc G, J, R. Because I go from point G to J, and then I continue and stop at R. So this is your starting point, this is your ending point, and this is essentially the point you went in the direction of. So if I wanted to say this arc right here, the blue one, then I would just call it arc G, R. And if I wanted to say the other side, the major part, I could say arc G and then keep going J and then R. So the way you name arcs can be kind of different, but I mean, it's not really confusing. It's, I think it's easier to handle than the central or the angles because, you know, oh. so 
We got that. So that's it. That's that's what we call nomenclature. That's naming things. So we named all of our per important things in our circle. We got our central angle in arc. We got our radius, right? And I mean diameter, but that's not really important. So let me close this. I don't need to save. Let's look at the actual work that you know you're going to be getting essentially. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take this. So you've probably done this before, but we need to find the area of a circle, which is, you know, the space inside. You know what? Let me do instead of area first. We're going to find circumference first. Circumference is the distance around the circle. The distance around the circle. Uh, because circles are special, uh, we're going to find the area too, but that'll come later. Um, so any other shape that you find the distance around, it's called perimeter. But since circles are so special um, and they get fancy names, they get uh, their own fancy name. They get circumference instead of perimeter. But it's the same thing. It means the distance around. So there's a formula for circumference. Not difficult. It is two times pi. Ooh, that's an ugly pi symbol. Why does it look like that? Man, all right, now this is a zoom problem because pi looks freaking fine everywhere else I do it. All right, let me try. Uh, let me try this. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but MS Paint might be better. Ugh. All right, let's try this. Uh, circumference distance around and the formula is, let's try this, two times there we go, that's the pi symbol times R. Well, radius. So one really nice thing about circles, one really, really nice thing about circles is that there's only one variable almost ever. So with circumference, two is the number two. This never changes. Pi is a number. It is a, it is, I mean, it's an, it's an infinitely repeating decimal, but it's still just a number. 3.141592653538, so on and so forth, right? It's always this number. It's always 3.14159, like, it's always this number. Uh, please, real quick, uh, when we're doing questions for circles, do not use 3.14. Do not use 3.14. Use the whole number. And even though it's infinite, that's why you have a calculator and you just hit the pi symbol on your calculator and it gives you pi. So if you needed to do five times pi, then you do five times pi and hit equals, right? That's it. Do not do five times 3.14. Now, I know this looks simpler and you're like, I don't understand the reasoning behind it or what's the point? Well, the point is, is that if you're working with really large numbers, then the difference between pi and 3.14 becomes really big. So like, you know, if we were doing the circumference of something with a radius, this one already has a radius, but um, I mean, if we were doing the radius, let's say our radius was, uh, I don't know, one five two two five eight three six five. All right, hundred and is that a million? Uh, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, millions. So one hundred and fifty-two million two hundred and fifty-eight thousand three hundred and sixty-nine. Right. So let's say we were calculating um, the area of some massive property or something. Well, if we've got this guy and we multiply him by three point one four. Uh, what is it? One five two two five eight three six nine. All right, so we get this. Uh, point six six. Uh, so just look at the last three numbers: two seven eight point six six. But if we take, ooh, can I just go back? 
it's going to erase it the second I click on this. Um, dang it. I really want to show this out. 152258369. 152258369. All right, times pi. Well, if you look at the last three numbers, there's a big difference here. There might be a difference in the bigger numbers too, but specifically the last one. We're looking at like five, 600 difference. I know that doesn't make a big difference and you're like, well, well I'll get the answer wrong, right? Well, you will get the answer wrong, but I, I know of one, I'll tell you in an, anec in an anecdote real quick because this lesson isn't that long. Um, there was a guy in, I forget which state, it was, you know, like Midwest of America where no one cares about, right? Uh, unless you're from there and then congratulations, right? You grew up in nowhere. So uh, it was, this guy owned a ridiculous amount of land and they calculated parts of his land using pi because it was like an arc, like huge sections of his land had these arcs. And so they had to use uh, formulas to figure out the, you know, basically his land, how much land he had. And they used 3.14 instead of pi. So all of these years, this guy thinks his land is so large, right? They gave him his number or whatever. Well, I think over 30 years, a bunch of people started building uh, houses and businesses. You know what? I'll even make... Why didn't it fill? Oh, because I didn't put a filter. So they started making businesses and houses and communities and all this stuff on the outside of his land, right? So there's all these places that had cropped up just on the outside of his land because he owns this and not that, right? Well, then he gets his land reevaluated. Someone else comes in, a new company and says, oh, let's do it. And they don't use 3.14, they actually use pi. Well, it turns out his land was actually, uh, oh, oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, his land was actually much larger than they originally anticipated and actually encompassed all of these places. So after like 30, 40 years, he realizes, wait, this is all my land. So, of course, being a dude who owns a lot of stuff and I'm probably very rich, he decides, well, now all of you need to pay me rent because you're living on my land. And, well, they sued. <laughs> they all sued him because they're like, we're not paying you anything because we bought this land. It's ours, right? And even though it was officially, you know, 50 years ago, his land, uh, since it was, they, they said it was his fault in the court case that, he didn't check the math. The math wasn't right. That's the, him and the company's fault. Uh, so this isn't your land anymore. These people bought it under the pretense that it wasn't yours. And now they own it. Nothing you can do about it. So this dude lost, I'm, I forgot the total. I think it was around $678 million worth of property plus any rent that he could have been charging them for them living there. He lost all of it because a company did 3.14 instead of just hitting the pi symbol on their calculator. So, you know, there's your, your story, I guess, of why it matters. For me personally, um, you're just going to get the wrong answer if you use 3.14. And if you do it on the test, you're going to get the wrong answer if you use 3.14 instead of pi. Also, just, you know, uh, if I wanted to do 8 times pi... I could do eight times 3.14, I could do that. That's one, two, three, four, five, six clicks, right? Or, oops, <coughs> excuse me. I could do eight times pi, which is one, two, three, four. It's literally easier to do it the right way. <laughs> literally easier to just hit the pi button and hit equals, like it's, just do it that way, please. I don't want you to get questions wrong on my quizzes or on the test and exam just because you use 3.14. Don't do that, please. It's easier to do this. Do that. Okay. All that being said, let's do, let's actually do the circumference of this question uh, now that my story's all done and whatnot. Okay. 
Uh, coming back over here, text, we got uh, two times pi times radius. So the only variable in this equation is radius. Pi is a set number, two is a set number. So all you have to do is find the radius and lo and behold, <gasps> it's right there. Because they can't hide anything from you in circles. So in triangles and other shapes, remember how they would like, oh, you have to find the height and then you can do this. So you have to find this piece and then do this. You know, those like multi-step things. When it comes to circles, it's just there. Like there's very, very rare situations or questions where they can hide what the radius is. And the, once you have the radius, you can do almost every single formula in a circle. So like there it is. So it actually is pretty simple. Like I said in the beginning, circles are pretty easy. You just have to, um, you know, you just have to know, well, you'd have to know circumference formula. We're going to go over the formulas a lot before the test. All right. So we know our formula, or our, our radius is 41. So we just punch that in. And then all we have to do is literally do this in the calculator. Since it's all multiplication, the order doesn't matter. So I like to do two times the radius first. 2 times 41, and then times pi, and you got to hit equals. If you write down your answer as 3.14, you know you screwed up because that's pi. So you probably didn't multiply by the radius, unless the radius was 1, in which case it still wouldn't work because it's 1 times 2, which is 2. So, But yeah, in the end, we get our circumference, which is 257.61. I always like two decimal places. And then the unit of measure is meters. Now this is circumference. This is the distance around an object. So this is just meters, right? It's just a measurement from point A to point B. But when we do area, that's different. So area uh, is filling, filling in the shape, right? I probably didn't have to define area for you, but just in case. Circumference is the distance around the shape, right? But area is filling it up. How many square units is what they call it. Um, if you remember tiles in like the classroom and everything, those tiles are square units, as specifically the ones in in hall where my classroom is, they're one foot by one foot. So they're one foot squared. Literally, it's a square which is why they call it that. So that's what we got to fill this up with is square units, which are meters. But the formula for area of a circle, pretty easy. It is pi times r squared. That's it. And just like circumference, you only need to find the radius and you can do the whole thing. So this is going to be pi times our radius is 41, so 41 squared. And easy peasy, come over to the calculator, 41. And you can do times 41. You can multiply it by itself, or you can hit the squared button. Either one works. You get the same thing, right? 41 times 41 gives you the same thing. Times pi equals... And there's your area, uh, 5,281.02, because that 7 is going to bump that 1 up. And it's going to be meters, and then here's the other thing, squared. You may think I'm being petty about that, little like the unit squared, but I'm being petty about it because the test is going to be petty about it. You're going to have answer choices. For a question like this, let's say 5,281.02 meters, 5,281.02 meters squared. That's the difference between A and B. And if you select the wrong one going too fast, you get it wrong just for some dumb reason. I mean, I don't think it's fair, but I don't get to make your exam, so uh, they don't listen to me. So, but regardless, make sure you pay attention. Area, square units, squared units. Circumference is distance, it's just a measurement. So circumference is a measurement, area is filling something up, it's squared units. That's circumference and area formula.
the biggest misconception that I see, I see this a lot when students get questions like this wrong. I see two times pi times radius squared. They take both of these formulas and they mash them together and just get the same weird, huge, huge number for every single thing. Don't do this. Forget that. Don't look at it anymore. Just erase it from your memory. Please don't do that. You've got to know the difference between circumference and area. What I do is area is units squared, right? There's a square. So when I see r squared, I know it's area. Pi r squared is area. And then circumference is two times r. Another way to think of it is where the two is. Some students remember this by circumference is it's all flat. Area, the two comes on top of the r. You just take the two from here and slide it over to the radius. However you want to remember it is fine. You just got to remember it. You really got to remember it. So, okay. So we got that. So yeah, circumference and area. There's going to be a couple of questions on the quiz about circumference and area because well, you got to know it. And then I guess I'll just keep using MS Paint. And let's do arc length. We got two to do here. All right. So we're going to do arc length. And arc length is, well, distance of an arc. Oh, yeah, there you go. That works well. All right, so distance of an arc, right? So let's do the obvious one right here, GR. We're going to find the length of arc GR. Well, arc length, the formula, is a little weird. It's central angle over 360 degrees. That's not the right one. It's, that, uh oh, what's going on? Why are you, why is my computer yelling at me? There we go. All right, so let's do that. And then this situation here. Oh, this formula is not going to fit here. Dang it. Let me see if I can take it down there. Ah, I can't. I'm going to take this part. It's still not going to fit. I need more room. Uh, hold on. Is that going to work? Hey, that works. Cool. Yeah, bear with me. Sorry, I ran into the technical difficulties of running out of room. All right. And this pain isn't so bad, I guess. I can't believe I just said that. Ugh. All right. Equals. Nope, that's not it. Central angle. Central angle over 360 times. Uh, circumference. That's the arc length. So for my people who are really good at algebra, uh, you're taking a section of the circle, dividing it by the whole circle, since circles add up to 360 degrees, right? That's a circle, that's a whole spin. Um, and you're finding the percentage of the circumference that this is. Now for everyone else uh, who doesn't understand what I just said, it's cool. You don't have to understand what I just said. All you have to do is this formula and it works. So let's spell it out, right? We got our central angle over 360 times, and I said we're going to spell it out because we're going to spell out, well, circumference, right? Because circumference is 2 pi r. So if you don't remember circumference for some reason, or you don't want to remember this formula through central angle over 360 times circumference, remember it like this. Central angle over 360 times 2 pi r. So now there are 
two variables in this formula. We got our central angle, but we also have our radius. Coming over here for arc GR, GR is this guy right here. Our central angle is 163. And we already have our radius, it is 0.8. So we just plug these things in. 163 over 360, right? Times. And finish plugging it in. 2 pi, and our radius is 0 0.8. So however you want to plug this into the calculator is fine, but make sure you don't make mistakes. The biggest issue that I see with students here at this juncture, they get everything right, and then they just put it in the calculator wrong. They just mess it up. Um, and it's unfortunate because, you know, you, you did all the work. You got it right. You put everything in, and then you just, you know, use the tool wrong. So there are a couple of ways to do this. The safe way would be to write down the numbers. So 163 divided by 360 equals. That one's really easy because I would put 0.452 and then sevens, right? I would just put the line over the seven. And then when I wanted to multiply by that, I would hit 452 and I would fill my calculator up. <clears throat> oh, it was point. 452 and I would literally just hit 7 until my calculator didn't let me anymore like that's how I would do that so I can get an accurate answer you can do it that way like just write it down um, and then do the other section or 163 divided by 360 equals times and now this is where a lot of students would mess up, which is why I'm on the fence about showing this to you. But the parentheses here, you can use to do multiple functions in a calculator. So if I do the first one, it's got 163 divided by 360 times, and now I can just put stuff into the parentheses. So I'm gonna put two times pi times 0.8. Now that's all within the parentheses. From here, I could just hit equals, I think, and get the right answer. Let me test it. So I can close the parentheses and then hit equals. And ow, that I mean that's it. That's our that's our arc length. That's our arc gr equals 2.28, because that five will push that seven to an eight millimeters, tiny, tiny circle. Um, I wanna see if I can get that with just hitting equals. 163 divided by 360 equals times parentheses, two times pi times 0.8 equals. Yeah, okay, you can skip closing the parentheses and just hit equals and it'll get you the same answer. I mean, that makes it mildly less complicated, but uh, I mean, there's, I really hate to see students get this far in their notes and then give me an answer that's wrong because they just, they just put this in the calculator wrong. Um, it's just, it's really unfortunate. I hate seeing that. So uh, please just be careful when you're punching this in the calculator. Please make sure you practice and learn how to do it. Uh, Cause I just, I don't want you to see it get it wrong when you did it correctly, especially on the exam. That's just terrible. So that's how you would find the arc that they gave you, right? But what about, what about, this is gonna look awkward at first. What about this arc? Oh, that don't, that don't look right. I'm, I'll just draw it in the sail. So what about, <laughs> why is it so tiny? Let's try to. So what about this? Oh, that is where I am. So if we were in the classroom, 
uh, this wouldn't look any better because I'm really bad at art and drawing, but uh, <laughs> it's so ugly. Uh, it's funny because I'm kind of, I'm bad at drawing, but I'm also a semi-perfectionist. So uh, this is exactly what the classroom would look like, me drawing on the board and being like, I don't like that. And eventually you guys would be like, Coach A, we get it, dude. Like, just can you move on? Um, but, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get this right and it's going to drive me insane. But there's a big old arc on the other side here. Uh, uh, so ugly. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Doing it faster does not make it better. All right. This is the last one. I promise. We're just, I'll just, ugh, just live with that. Okay. So what if we needed to find the arc length of arc, arc length of arc G T R. Let me do this situation and get rid of some of our past stuff so that's not clogging everything up that that works all right cool so let's find gtr well gtr is actually i mean you just follow the lines along or you start at g and you follow the line till you find t and then you keep going until you end at r so GTR is this huge length, uh, arc length on the other side. It's the other side, right? This, if you were looking at this, it would be major, right? Or uh, major arc GR, because this is minor arc. It's a small one. Major would be the huge one on the other side. So how do we find that? Well, the first thing we need in central angle formula is the radius and the central angle. We have, I'm sorry, in arc length formula, we need the radius and the central angle. We have the radius. That hasn't changed just because we're on this side. We do not have the central angle. This is blank. It is gone. So how are we going to find it? Well, a circle is 360 degrees. You do 360 degrees, you end up where you started, right? It's a full circle. And this is 163. So this must be what's left over. So we can take... 360 and minus our other central angle from it to find what's missing. 197 degrees is this central angle. So for GTR, for this, this side or this arc on the other side, you need to find its central angle. It's a different central angle. But now that we found it, it's the exact same thing. We plug it in. Central angle is 197 over 360, because that doesn't change, right? Times. And then circumference didn't change at all. 2 pi r, right? 2 pi, and our radius is 0.8. There we go. So coming over to the calculator, we can plug this in. 197 divided by 360 equals times. We'll go to the parentheses. Oh, you don't need the parentheses. Oh, I'm so sorry for complicating it for you. Since everything's multiplication, the order doesn't matter. Once you do the division, you can multiply everything. So you can do, once you have this, we have times in there, times two times pi times 0.8 equals arc length or arc GTR equals 2.75 millimeters. Yeah, I'm sorry. Since it's all multiplication, you don't have to do multiplication in any particular order for it to come out the right way, right? 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So as so long as it's multiplication, you don't need parentheses. You can just plug it in the calculator. I don't know why I tried to confuse you. I'm sorry. And just to make sure, 197 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times 0.8. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do the parentheses at all. I'm sorry. So that made it easier. Do the division times 2 times pi times 0.8, and you're done. 
PZ, PZ. So that's how you're going to find the arc length of a major arc, right, on the opposite side, or the minor arc, which could also be on the opposite side. If you are missing the central angle for an arc, then you're going to go to the other side and subtract that from 360 to find your missing piece. Okay, so I don't know how long this video has been. I'm sorry if it's super long, and I'm sorry I'm uploading it on a Friday, um, but I've been working all week on a lot of things, so this is where I'm at. But we're done, we're good. Your next quiz is gonna be um, on naming some things. I mean, just not really naming, there's name one thing. And then do area, do circumference, and do arc length. So that's your next quiz. Uh, I hope you do well on it. If you need help, please message me. Remember, I do the Zoom tutorings by request. You're more than welcome to ask me to help you at any point in time. Uh, but until then, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your week. Uh, I don't know, enjoy your life. Have a good one.